Hi all, today we're going to be talking about binary heaps. A binary heap is a data structure that allows the insertion of elements, querying the minimum of all the elements in the heap, and deleting the current minimum. There are some other operations like a heapify or meld or decrease key, but I'm not going to go over it in this video. Uh, leave a comment if you want me to cover these in a separate video. So what does a binary heap look like? Well, it's a left complete binary tree which means that all of the rows, and these are the rows, are filled with nodes except for the bottommost row, which has to be filled from the left to the right with no holes. There's the minimum value, the top, and child nodes must have a value which is larger than or equal to the values in its parent. And this is called the heap property. The minimum value being at the top is an implication of the heap property. So applying the heap proper property transitively down through the child and like the child's child uh, and so on means that descendants of a node must always be greater than or equal to that node. So another way to think about this is that a subtree of a binary heap will always have that the root of that subtree being the minimum value. So let's go through the time and memory complexity of the operations. So insert is log n for time complexity and it's constant memory, assuming you implement it iteratively rather than recursively. Querying the minimum is just looking at the root of the binary heap. So that's a constant time and constant memory. And deleting the minimum is log n time and constant memory. Now let's go through these operations and see how they work and why they have these complexities. So as mentioned earlier, the binary heap property is that a node's children are greater than or equal to it. The operations of a binary heap are based on temporarily breaking this property or invariant and then fixing it. So at this point, I encourage you to pause the video and based on that, try to think about how you would implement each of these three operations of an insert, delete and query minimum. So did you get it? The key observation for insertion is that it's uh, easy to insert something at the bottom left of the binary heap. But if we just insert, say, like a uh, two here, this uh, breaks the heap property. So we've invalidated the heap uh, property, the, that invariant. So now we have to fix it. So we can push this value up the tree. So this two here would swap with this 15, so like that. And then we compare this two with its parent, which is three. So we push the three down and push the two up and same thing. So this three gets swapped with this two. So now there's a three here again, and we got this two here. And this is called bubble up. And you can see here's the recursive implementation and here's the iterative implementation. The recursive uh, implementation is not as good because it uses our log n memory for storing the stack frames. So at this point, I encourage you to pause the video and try to prove the time and memory complexity of insertion in a binary heap. So why is insertion log n time? Well, the tree height is log two of n, where n is the number of nodes. Uh, to see this, remember that log two is defined as the value such that uh, two to the power of that value is equal to n. So how many times do we need to double two until it's bigger than n? Well, each row of the binary tree, the number of nodes in that row doubles. So counting the rows is the same process as doubling two until it's greater than n when we get down to the bottommost row of the binary heap. This means that the tree height is log two of n. Now the bubble up algorithm potentially swaps the current node with its parent, uh, which is a constant time operation uh, all the way up to the top of the tree. So it performs at, l at most log two of n operations, making it order log n time. Now let's look at deleting the minimum element. Now the observation for deleting the minimum is that it's easy to delete the bottom left node, uh, i.e. this one. But we want to delete the root. So what we can do is swap the bottom leftmost node 
its value with the root node's value. So now we have three at the bottom here and 17 at the top. And now it's super easy to just delete this, right? Just get rid of it. But now we've violated the heat property here at 17. So we can do a similar operation to insertion, except we go down the tree rather than up it. And this is called bubble down. And there's a few other names as well. It's uh, mildly complicated by the fact that instead of having one parent we need to think about, think about we have two children and we need to decide which path to go down. So we're trying to get 17 and push it down and get the smallest value in this entire tree to the top, right? And that's three. But if we were to push 17 down to where this 12 is, then we'd have 12 at the top of the tree and that would be wrong. So instead of just looking at the parent in bubble up, we need to look at both the children and the current node and find the smallest value out of those and set that to the current node's value and then go down the path uh, that we selected or go down no path at all. So let's have a look at uh, the pseudocode here. So first it just swaps the root and last node's values and then bubbles down from the root. It finds the left and right child and then it finds the smallest value out of the current node, the left child and the right child if the left child and the right child exist. And once it finds that, if we have to go down further in the tree, i.e. the smallest node is the left child or the right child, not the current node, then we swap those values and we bubble down again. So let's go through the example here. I've got 17, smallest node is three. So we chuck 17 here, put three up here. Now we run the same operation here. So the smallest node here is five. So we put five here and we chuck 17 here. And now we're done because there are no children. I encourage you to pause the video and have a bit of a think about why the time complexity for delete min is log n. The argument here is pretty much the same as insertion. Uh, the key point here is we only go down one branch. So that means that we only do the number of iterations potentially up to the height of the tree. And on each iteration, we only do constant time work. So it's log n time complexity overall. Now have a think about why we want the binary heap to be left a left complete binary tree. We want the binary heap to be left complete for a few reasons. So first reason, it ensures that each row is full up before we start a new row. row. And this is important because we need to maintain the invariant that the height of the binary tree is about a log two of n. If we don't do this, then the time complexities will be weird, right? So if we were to just like, only put one node in each row, for example, then the height of the tree would be n and the complexities would be linear instead of log n, which is not what we want. And the second reason is uh, it's easier to implement because we can store the entire tree in an, an array and comp compute the parent and ch child indices in that array by multiplying or dividing by two. So for example, if we were to number these, make that one, this two, three, four, five, six, seven. From one, we can get to the left child and the right child by multiplying uh, the node index by two and then adding one for the right child. So for example, here, two times two is four and plus one is five. And to get to the parent node from a node, we just divide by two. So four divided by two is two, a five divided by two, and we round down, that's two. So that's very convenient for implementation. So now have a th think about why there are two children. Is it really necessary that we have two children? Could we have more or less? So if you had one child, then your tree height becomes order n and you're doing an insertion slot essentially. So number of children being one is not very useful. It's possible to have uh, more than one child and you might do this from some like weird cache line uh, size reason or hardware specific reasons. Uh, but in general, it's going to be worse, I think. Uh, the generate case is having n children, which, um, in which case delete min is going to be linear time because you have to check all those n children off the root. And maybe there's some value in the middle for number of children that would be useful. For example, if you, if you had many more insertions than deletions, uh, the insert will be a, a bit faster because you have to do a, there'll be less layers you have to go up when you do bubble up, but I haven't investigated. So what are binary heaps useful for? Here's a few things. One, uh, priority queue. This is useful for, for example, implementing a Dijkstra's or any uh, priority first search. Another one is heap sort. You can sort an array by inserting everything into a heap 
then alternating uh, getting the minimum and removing the minimum. And this is used in, for example, like intro sort. We can also use it to find the kth smallest element or do a multi-way merge of sorted lists. And it's also used in some interview questions, like a famous one is the online median computation using two heaps. But most of all, I think these ideas are most useful as ideas themselves. So we have the heap property, which is an invariant. And creating invariants and then temporarily breaking them and then cleverly fixing them is a useful technique. So also see loop invariants, for example. And when you're trying to understand an algorithm, identifying the invariants is also very useful uh, for understanding. And a few bits and bobs, there's heapify, which lets you construct a binary heap in linear time. This doesn't imply linear time sorting because delete min still takes log n time. And you have balanced binary search trees. And these have more structure. The left child is going to be smaller than or equal to the parent, and the right child is greater than or equal. But they have worse constant factors uh, because they need to maintain that extra structure. A binary heap has less structure, but the constant factors are better. And there are also other types of heaps, for example, Fibonacci heaps. And these generally have higher constant factors and they all must have at least one log n operation so you can't heap sort in linear time. I've made a video showing how to code a binary heap with commentary if you're interested. It's linked in the description. And this is useful for the actual practical implementation. Maybe you're doing this in competition programming or you want to be able to code it for an interview. But with that, don't heap it all at once.